All right, time to do the next step of these guys. And that involves some silver and maybe some gold. I don't know, we'll have to see on that part. Well, or not, we do both of them. But I've got here just resin uh, pigment powders and silver and gold. And yeah, they're kind of stuck together because I usually do a little bit of resin with the, the powder or color mixed in with it. And I put a little blob on the top just so I can always have a quick reference. And I stacked them when it wasn't, well, let's just say it wasn't cured yet, but it's cured now. <laughs> I have to laugh at myself. Anyway, so there's a couple different ways that I can apply the silver and the gold. Uh, one of them is with a brush and the other one is with fingers. And I've just got a little bit here. It doesn't take a whole lot. Literally dab it on your fingers and swipe it over the surface. And I'm doing this one handed, so and it'll pick up on the raised areas. Right now I'm just pouncing because if I swipe, it'll move all over the place for you. But you see how it grabs the little engraved areas that are raised up. So that one, that's what we're working on. Okay. I'm just barely putting some on my finger, not a whole lot. And I'm just going along side to side and it kind of burnishes it on top. And it's just picking up these little molds here have really nice engraving that is raised up. So it works really, really well. Now any of them, uh, there's a lot of molds out there that has the engravings that are cut in. It won't work that well for picking up fine details because the silver will end up rubbing onto the larger raised areas. Now, if that's what you want, then by all means. But this um, technique seems to work really, really well with powders that have metallics in them. And see, I rubbed that one too much, so now I've actually kind of rubbed the silver off a bit. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more. Let's see how that really brings that out. All right, get going on these guys. Get a little bit more. And that's why I also didn't apply a whole bunch of, um, of the chameleon powder on there because I knew I would be doing this. So look at the difference between the wings. That looks cool. All right, get a little bit more. It really, I didn't show that very well. Got you super zoomed in. I'm gonna hit a little bit of the eyeballs. And these are super lightweight. There's also another pigment powder that will work and I will put that link in the description below. I just happen to have the um, Just Resin powders out and I use, those are usually my go-tos anyway when I'm adding gold or silver into my resins. Um, so I thought I'd give it a try as far as rubbing it on there. And it looks like it works pretty darn good. Super excited. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Here, see how it has a large area here that's raised up? And then these are like cut and it has skinnier lines that are raised up. So you're gonna find that a lot of the silver is gonna land on those larger surfaces. So we'll do that real quick just so that you can see. 
See what I mean there? I'm just going to let it happen. I'm not worried about it. Try to work in there. Now, the more directions you go into, like if I go in this direction and turn around and go in this direction, um, you're going to end up covering all the engravings and the crevices with the silver. And so you'll lose the detail. Now, if that's what you want, go right ahead. But I would encourage you to try and go one direction if you're just wanting to get highlights. I could turn this and go that direction with this side. Pounce that again. And what I try and do also, if I've got a large amount on my finger, is I'll put a little bit all over and then work in my details. Or work it in, I should say. Because that way, if you deposit a lot of pigment down, you're depositing a lot in its several areas, which ends up equalizing. In the middle of here, I'm just brushing, whoops, brushing this way. So I'm making a point of just keeping that direction the same. That looks super cool. It really makes a big difference. Okay. Now this guy here has a ton. So, you know what, I might switch to you a little bit of copper, or I'm sorry, a little bit of gold here, so. And just get popsicle stick and just scoop just a little bit. Now I'm putting it onto a paper plate, which allows me to dip my finger in uh, easily. And just that, not much. But since I have fingernails, if I were to dip into a bowl, you can see how that could become problematic. Then you get blobs in there, and that's not good. Versus just doing the, the pat of your finger. All right, ready for some magic? Oh yeah, I'm glad I switched over to gold for the bee. So somebody has already created a really super nice mold here and I'm just utilizing that design. So, and you need to be mindful because if you get too much, it'll start to fill up crevices and I almost kind of got too much in there. So I can either keep on applying and make that area really gold or I could just leave it as is or maybe even tap it to try to eliminate or even get um, some scotch tape and see if I can pick it up. But I am actually going to put in a little bit more into this zone and just go with it. Really golden that belly up. I'm so zoomed in that it's easy to get off camera. All right, pick up a little bit more, and I'm just gonna go heavier on the tops of the wings. Try and get those to stand out, and then so the antennas. Now bugs have a tendency to be a favorite for jewelry makers because of the attention. It's just got a lot of little parts in there that you can play around and do really creative uh, line work and such. All right, let's see. I think I'm gonna do this guy with 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna do gold with him too. Just tapping my finger a little bit, and I'm going to barely touch around. And then, hey, that worked on the little, these look like little tassels. Okay, let's see if I can go one direction with him. Okay, I lied as I go around. There, I'll follow that around. If you've got a very ornate piece like this, I wouldn't recommend being very busy on your colors. Like this would probably not be a great idea for a dirty pour, unless your colors were similar, like almost a monotone, because you will end up losing your details, unless that is the plan all along. All right, let's just spin him around. What I'm going to do after this is I'm going to spray these with uh, some kind of archival spray or some to seal it, the powder in place, before I apply these guys to the tray. And that way, none of the powders fly off. Let's see if I can pick up a little bit of that metal detail. Alright, I did it again. Alright, I think that worked out pretty good. Okay, one more bug. I guess I'm doing all the butterflies in silver and the, the other bugs. And gold. I'm just barely tapping it on if I think I got too much. This has got a lot of flat surface on it, so those little grabbers are going to be gold. And that's okay. with how these are turned out. All right, clean off my finger. Basically means rub it on my shorts. <laughs> hey, I've got some shorts I designate for a studio. I don't have a problem with them whatsoever having paint on them. All right, so this particular mold here has some butterfly markings on it as well as flowers and such. Now the butterfly markings, I need to be mindful because I've also got a very large area here and I don't know if I want that large area to be all silver so I'm just gonna tap it ever so lightly but here I don't the lines I don't mind it picking up the silver so it's just I might do 
a lot of silver on this edge. And then bring it up on these little engraved lines here. Very lightly here. The body, go run down the length of the body on that. Okay. Now this is gonna get tricky. Let's see. I'm just gonna tap my finger around and see what happens for now. All right. That works. Okay. Yeah, they kind of came alive a little bit. Now these chameleons will probably pop back out as far as intensity when I put a coat of resin on top of these. So that'll look real good. Okay, so this step is done. And I'm like I said, I'm gonna do an UV archival spray on this just to kind of keep the powder set, meaning like, you know, don't, don't go anywhere. And then I will have them ready to use them on the tray. I, look at that, the dragonfly, how just even in the mold, how I uh, did a multiple colors in it and then adding the silver to it, how that adds a lot of nice detail in there. I'm thinking about doing some kind of like a sky blue background and having these guys buzzing around. I bet that would look pretty. That almost looks like oh, there's like a face in there too. A lot of bugs have face designs in there or, or giant eyes to kind of like in the wings, they'll have giant eyes to kind of help deter other predators into thinking that, you know, hey, I'm bigger than you, I can take you. Well, look how the details really, really come out with just brushing it with a little bit of gold or the silver. I have to admit, I think this dragonfly is one of my favorites in how it looks right now, and also this butterfly. Pretty cool. Looks like a little piece of jewelry. All right. Until the next step, and yes, it's going to be another video, but you're just going to have to wait because I got, I got an idea what I'm going to do with these. I think you're going to like it. Later. All right, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. And also, check my descriptions uh, down at the bottom of the video because I'll have links to any of the products that I use. I get a lot of questions about that. And also a uh, link to my Etsy page because I'm starting to put my art out there. So it's available, guys. And things are selling, which I'm very, very happy about. All right.